Gov. I am back again with uh, the tutorial, so to speak, um, or just tips on how to, I really call it a tutorial, more, more tips on how to do this because there's a lot of different ways to uh, do a ring bound journal with your little golden books or you know any any kind of book any kind of hardback book if you want to do this um, it you can do it several ways so what you'll need of course you'll need a ruler you'll need your scissors you'll need a hole punch um, and I've got to get my big bite I forgot to bring that over here I thought I had everything um, a bone folder helps not t not totally necessary um, a pen because we're gonna make a template just a lightweight piece of chipboard, something you can use as a template. Doesn't really have to be chipboard, it could just be a piece of paper. Um, I just happen to have a lot of these strips already cut, so I'm gonna use this. So we can make a template for our holes. Um, some cardstock or something. Um, I use cardstock, you need something that's got some weight to it so that when you glue it on here, this doesn't bend. Your, 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 um, book doesn't bend right here okay because we're going to cover up this where this bends okay so we've left the now i showed you the way to cut the book apart and it just depends on what you want to do with it or how you want to bind it you don't have to go through the struggle of pulling the the um staples out like i did in my last video and then i just ended up cutting it all off <laughs> like if you're going to cut this off don't go through all that but i was just showing you different ways, uh, different ideas, okay? But today we're gonna do, we're gonna cover this up and we're gonna do it like a, um, I'm gonna do two rings, okay? You can do three, you can do four, uh, you can do smaller jump rings. This is just how I like to do it. Two is easier. Um, two, you can kind of put closer together. The book will flip easier, um, and then you only have to punch two holes, because I punch my pages pretty much one at a time, or, you know, two or three pages. I don't, um, I don't have a hole puncher, you know, where I can just stick it in a, a hole puncher and just punch, you know, a whole bunch of pages at one time, and I don't like to do it that way anyway. I like to kind of have control over what I'm going to do, so I'll show you that part later, but, um, so you just need your little golden book or whatever kind of book you want. Um, for this is pretty much the little golden books because that's the way their, um, you know, binding is. And then um, some hole reinforcers. I have these hole reinforcers. And I have different um, types of binding rings here. These are both the same size. They're like two inch, two inch binding rings. These are like a, more like a bronze metal. These are a little pricier. These, you can buy a whole pack of these, you know, on Amazon. Um, these tend to hold up a little bit better. And then there are these, which I really like, which when you're finished, when you are finished with your journal, these are really cool because you can, um, once you've got your pages where you want as you're working and flipping back and forth, this twist them. And it takes a minute. It takes a minute to get them going. But it twists on, and these typically do not come apart, okay? You know, sometimes these sometimes these don't hold up for a really long time. Um, these are a little bit tighter. I like these. But anyway, and then, you know, there's always things you can do once you get your book finished um, and you've got your rings in there. You can always put some washi or something around this, something thin, you know, to keep these from coming open. You can do that. Anyway, just another little tip. So, we need our cover, okay? We need... Um, a piece of cardstock, and this is like, this is two inches, yeah. So it's two inches across, and then it's um, eight inches tall, okay? And then we're gonna fold that over, and then take your bone folder, and just, you know, do your, do your little crease, just so that you have it even, okay? Um, so you've got that ready. I already glued this one just so I could show you how it's gonna look. And then we're gonna glue this one to the back of here. And I've pulled out um, several different strips of fabric, okay, and cut it. 
because I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. If I'm, I'm leaning towards, if I do the full piece of fabric, I'm leaning towards this. Um, but I also like the washi. So I made a bunch of fabric washi. And this works really well. I like it. Um, now, if I use this, I'm not going to run this through my sewing machine. If I use this, if I use this piece, then I can probably run it through my sewing machine. So we're gonna glue it like this. And then I could run it through my sewing machine kind of right there in the middle, okay? Or, or right on the edge, probably right on the edge right there. And then, cause I'm gonna punch my holes over here. So think about all that when you're doing this. I can't run, I'm not gonna run this through my sewing machine. This is that double-sided carpet tape that I've made washi tape out of. So um, I'm not gonna gum my machine up using that. I just don't think, I think my machine would be mad at me if I did that. So, um, but I really do, I really do like this. But on the other side of the coin, I really like this. And if I fold it over, because this is about this is about the same size, it's like two inches. And then if I fold it over, oh, you can see what I'm doing. If I fold it over like this. And you just have to just have to kind of mess with it. I you know, actually I don't use my bone folder a whole lot. I just brought that out if you like to get things exact. Um I use my fingers more than I do anything else. Okay, so then, then I can decide, now this, this piece is long, okay? So this piece is probably, yeah, this is like 13 inches long, but you know, I don't need all that. So then I can look on my book, do I like it here? Or do I like those colors? And I'm leaning towards this right here, okay? And let's hope that it's gonna be wide enough. I'm gonna be pushing it to cover that up. Um, I'm gonna have to really, really, really push to cover that part up. So that may not work. <coughs> it may not be wide enough. This might work better. Excuse me for my cough. Um, it's just my allergies are crazy. So I think I'm just gonna do the, I think I'm gonna do this one. Okay, this fabric. So, Take your, take that and put it aside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece that I already folded, not too much stuff out here. Um, and I'll put, I will put links to all these things that um, I have purchased on Amazon. The, the rings, um, and I think I picked these up. You can pick these whole reinforcements up at Walmart or anywhere, um, but they have those, they have those on Amazon too. So I'll put links if y'all are interested in that. All right, anyway, so I'm gonna use a wet glue. I'm gonna use my, my PVA glue, and I get this on Amazon too. And this is, this glue is, um, it's not cheap, but it's a really good glue. And it's a, it's a huge bottle, and I think it's like, I think it's like 17 or 18 dollars but this bottle will last a long time um yeah and it's it's archival too if you're interested in that it's an archival um adhesive and it's gotten a little I may need to cut a bigger hole. Usually this stuff comes out faster than this. This is my new bottle. I finally used up the other one um, the other day. There we go. It's coming out faster. All right, so we don't need that much glue. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna spread this out. Just like I do on um, my binding when I do it. So then you're just going to take it and put it right over top of here. Okay. And push this. Make sure you got it all the way up to the edge. 
here. Make sure you've pushed it all the way to the edge. So that's why I say in this case, really, if you do, if you use your bone folder um, and get that really, really, um, really, really, I don't know what my words are. I can't ever find my words when I'm on camera. Because this is kind of thick, you know? So see, it's more rounded. See what I'm saying? It's more rounded than if you do your bone folder. Because you want to make sure that you got a big enough, you want to make sure that you're covering up that part of the spine because you want that to give you some sturdiness so that once you put this on here the book's not going to bend here at that point where you left that part of the spine on now i'm going to take my bone folder and push that glue down okay. And thank you guys. I want to say thank you to all of you who have left me such sweet comments um, on the videos for this sort of Chris this Christmas in August series, so to speak. Um, I really do appreciate each and every one of you. I've read all your comments and um, I haven't replied to all of them, but I've read all of them. And uh, I just want to thank you for that. It's very sweet of you guys. Okay, so now we have the front in the back, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is, um, I think I'm going to use, I think I'm gonna use this same glue. You can use fabric glue here if you're gonna glue, um, to glue this fabric on. Um, I'm almost out of my fabric glue, so I'm gonna use this, and then I think I'm gonna stitch through it. So I'm just gonna do, not too heavy on the glue, and I'm gonna spread it out. This fabric is uh, not a super thick fabric, so I don't want that to bleed through. Okay. And these fabric strips are like, um, so they're like two and a half, about two and a half inches wide. And I usually cut a little bit over, they're right at like eight and a quarter. I usually cut a little bit bigger, okay? Um, Cause I don't want it butted right up to the edge. I like that little frayed part. But you do it however, you know, whatever's pleasing to you. Whatever you like. And I have a And what I'll probably do, I won't do the sewing machine, the sewing on um, camera. I'm not probably, I'm gonna punch the holes first before I sew. Okay. I have so much stuff stacked around me, y'all. We might have a craft a lunch at some point, we'll see. If I keep getting stuff. And now if you want it to be like lined up from front to back, you can, you know, cut it a little bit better than I did. I'm not, I'm not after perfection. So you don't have to do it like that. So that is, and you can see it's not, it's not bending unless you really were to just go mm, and just <laughs> yank it, you know, it's sturdy. And then we'll do, I think the reason we'll do this piece. I think this piece, I think I cut it a little bit bigger. All right, let's set that aside. Now we'll do this one and make sure, make sure, you know, that your fabric, and you can prevent what I just did if you want it exact you know just make sure when you glue it fold it over like that so it's so it is lined up better anyway. and just do your glue spread it out Um, 
and when you're doing a when you're doing this kind of pattern yeah any little um imperfection in the way you glue it <laughs> shows up more for sure when you use lines or whatever but it's uh it's fine like i said i don't i'm not ever i'm not ever looking for perfection it doesn't exist so in my mind anyway yeah no, i got that a little bit too go and that'll dry pretty quick so um now if you're not if you're not going to stitch through it i would recommend i would recommend using the fabric glue but i'm going to stitch through it okay i'm going to stitch right you know right here there's the the line for where these two meets right there i'm going to stitch right here because i want to leave this outside part i don't want to punch my holes through the stitching okay um, and one way to prevent that is to punch your holes before you stitch. <laughs> so, I've made myself a little, um, you know, I've got myself a little piece of chipboard here. I want to make a template. So, I want to see. Very technical. So, this is the middle. So, I think I'm going to come up two inches from the middle and then two inches from the middle there. Or I could come down, actually, I might go an inch and a half. I think I'm gonna go an inch and a half. And the reason why I wanna do this closer um, is because if I wanna put like, say I wanna use time cards or I wanna use smaller envelopes or something like that in this, if I put my holes closer together like that, then I've got room on those more narrow pieces like say, like say I wanna use a tag like this. So if I come in, what did I say? One, two, three, yeah. So here's the middle. So if I, even if I came in like an inch, this is probably too narrow, but I'm thinking an inch and a half and an inch and a half. Um, and then I can use something that's this way, long ways. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but I still could punch it this way. But I kind of like to have that option of of um, putting different size pages in, you know, rather than, now you can just take a tag and put it in the hole and, you know, it can flip like that. You can do that too. There's just so many, so many options. This is just, this is just my little, you know, this is my brain working. You can do whatever you want to do. It's your book, your journal, your art. So now... I'm gonna have to grab my crocodile. I don't have a um, small crocodile. I have the big bite. I have the big bite. So that's what I use to punch holes in my covers. But then I use this because this is a bigger hole. Um, I use this to punch my pages. Okay. So um, this will the. The big bite will work, but that bigger hole sometimes is not quite big enough. Like on the binder journals, you really need a little bit bigger hole. On this, the crocodile hole is probably fine, but this really matches up with um, with these. And I don't know what, I think it's like a quarter inch hole punch. It doesn't even say on here, and I, of course, threw the packaging away. But anyway, these you can pick up just about anywhere um they have different sizes at michael's and you know hobby lobby and stuff like that but so i said one two three you can see i'm not a mathematician wait a minute let me come down here one two oops i'll do it and a half I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm probably out of frame. Yeah, I'm out of frame. Hang on, I'll show you. Okay. So, I want my holes to be, you know, an inch and a half from the middle. 
okay? So here's my middle line, and then I went, in, not an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter. So I went an inch and a quarter, and an inch and a quarter. This is why I don't do math measurements <laughs> on um, when I'm doing a video. <sighs> I eyeball, actually, I eyeball a lot of stuff. I, I don't normally take time to do this, but I'm trying to tell you how I, you know, how to do this. And then probably about a quarter of an inch in. You don't want to come, I, I really want to be, so let's see, so yeah. If I come a whole, if I come a whole quarter of an inch in, I'm going to be right there at that line. So I don't want to be, I don't want to be right there in the middle of where we were trying to get this, you know, stronger. I want to be more like right off of that. So I'm going to make my mark here. And it's going to be hard to see on here. And... Well, the whole point of this, Carla, was the template, duh. So, <clears throat> let's just make our template. Okay, so I measured where I want my pages punched on my template, and then I did not use it really the way you should have used it. But So then what I can do is I can come here, instead of worrying about my where I put my dots and use the template. Hello. I'm surprised y'all still watch me because sometimes I'm just like, I wonder about myself. <laughs> just saying. So then I'm gonna line this up. I'm gonna line this up. So now I have my holes punched in the front, okay? Then I can come back and sew right here. And probably, prob I'll probably add some little pom-pom trim or something to this, too. So, just hadn't got to that point yet. We're just starting. So, so now I have my template. I don't have to worry about measuring again. Okay. I hope you can see me. Yep. I'm going to hold on to this tight. Now, you can clip this if you want to, if you feel more comfortable clipping it. And I'm going to line up up underneath here. And make sure you're still lined up. And line up there. Okay. All right. So now, one of my thoughts, too, in showing you this is when you start, when you, um, so now you've got your cover pretty much ready, okay, to start working. You don't have to stitch it now. You don't have to add any embellishments or anything. You can come back um, later and do all of that, okay? So you wanna get start getting your pages together. So ultimately we won't, we did that so that these pages will fit, okay? Um, so I was just thinking, kind of, you know, <laughs> my brain. I was thinking that it would be kind of cute and I've never done this. Normally I just, normally I trade, you know, I. Normally when I do this, I would do the same thing. I would cut the pages off and just mix them throughout the whole journal. But one one option that you can do is leave the first and second signature together. Over here. Line your um, signature up. And punch the holes in the first signature. And then I'm going to come back with this and make the holes just a little bit bigger. So you can see the difference. You see the difference in the size hole. Um, and just try to get right in the right spot there. And then I'm gonna punch my second signature. Okay. I'm gonna come back 
come back and So now I have both of the signatures. Now they still come apart. Okay, they'll still come apart. So you can, you know, you can pull one page, two page, three page if you don't care if the story's in order. But if you wanted to just have like the story in the front and the back of the book and then do all your, you know, journaling and all your other stuff in between, then you could just do this. And for now, I'm gonna use these. Okay. And then when you put your book together, you've got like the story in the front and the back, okay? That's one option. You can do it like that. And, um, and you don't have to cut any of the book. You know, it fits. You see that? It fits in there. So, that's one option. Or you can, if you want to cut your pages down, or if you want to cut this, cut this, just that little bit off, and then your pages won't go right up to the edge, but you could just cut that part off, and then do your pages individual throughout the book, okay? So, so now I've got some other things I want to put in here. And I'm just going to show you. I'm just going to show you a couple little things that you can do. Um, let me move this out of the way since we decided not to use washi. I made a bunch of this fabric washi the other night, just going through my scraps. And this is just, this is just really fun. I just use. Um, sometimes I'll use the same size strips, but um, I've tried going. Like Laura, I love watching Laura, the Jersey Crafter, do stuff. So she she does hers all different ways. But I don't know what's wrong with me. I, you know, my brain, for some reason, um, I just end up doing it like this, but I'm, I use different sizes, okay? And I always like to leave that little fringe there. Like I don't, you can butt your fabrics up to one another, um, but I like that little, I like that part. So that's the way I do that. So that's a good way to use up a bunch of scrap fabrics. And it really looks cute on things like this, but I really kind of wanted this on this one. So now I've got this pocket. This is another one of those Joey, Joey Diffie pockets that I want to put in here. And so now it is the same height of this. So I need to use my template at this, you know, like this. All right, so I'm gonna punch my holes. And you know what? I'm gonna see, let me see if I can get, I really need bigger holes. Now that I've done my cover, I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna make my holes bigger. And it really is just, it's a very small difference, but it does make a difference, um, especially when you use the binder journals. Your pages move better. Okay, so now I've got this all lined up and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna punch my holes in there, and then we'll just come in the middle. And put that in here. And now these, this is probably not gonna be the way I, I may not leave it this way, I'm just showing you some options. So here's the little slide protector, okay? Now, it's too big. It's really too wide, okay? But, if I cut it, if I cut it about right here, right at the edge of that hole, putting about a quarter of an inch off of it, it will fit. And it might stick out just a little bit, but again, that doesn't bother me. Now, so on this, you know, this is not the whole height of the book. So if I want it, if I want it down at the bottom, if I want this at the bottom of the page like that, then I'm gonna do my template like this, okay? If I want it kind of up a little bit, which is what I want, I want it up, but I wanna get, I don't wanna punch right through where those holes are, okay? So I'm gonna do this, well, yeah. I don't want it right there, hold on. Let me figure this out. Okay, I'm away from that hole and I'm away from that hole. So I'm gonna go 
closer to the bottom, okay? And this is a little bit harder to punch through. Then it's gonna slip on you, so you might wanna, you can paper clip it. So now I've got two holes there. Okay, now probably what I need to do really is put something on here, um, like a piece of paper or something. But it will work right here. It will, it will work like that, but I would probably go back I'd probably go back with some washi or something, um, or a piece of paper or something here and cover that, cover that part up. Right now I'm just showing you different things to put in here. Now I've got this other slide page that, okay, so it'll fit this way, but I need to turn it that way, okay? And then it's a little bit too tall. So what happens is your your protector is this way, okay? So you still slide things in there, and the beauty of this is you can take it in and out. And once you put pictures or little embellishments or, you know, washi tape, you can write little things on here because that's what that's meant for, you know, for slides. Um, or you can put little labels and dates and staple them on, run it through your sewing machine or whatever, just make sure you keep your holes, you know, um, there and put it right back in here. These are really fun. I, I really like using these. I've used a couple of them in my granddaughter's um, book. But I'm gonna have to cut some of this part off. So those will be smaller for other little things. Or I could just go ahead where this line is. I could just go ahead and say, well, no, I'll just use the six spots and cut right there and then do my holes on this side. And let's say, let's go, and I wouldn't put the two plastic things back to back in the book, I would alternate them. Okay, so then you have another little sleeve, but when you turn it, so when you turn it, it'll be your little slides go in this way, or your little pieces pictures, whatever. Um, then you can actually use these. Like I have some of these left over from page protectors that I've cut up. And I think what I wanna do with some of these, I don't think I'm gonna punch the holes in them because they're still, so they're, they're still intact all the way around. So I think what I'm gonna do with these is maybe on, like maybe on this or something like this. I'm gonna cut this down. I could just stitch, stitch around this and make a little clear pocket and it would be a double pocket. Okay, so like here, these are some, these are like vinyl tab pages. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna cut it down to where the tab, and I'm gonna go to my cutter and I'm gonna cut it down here and cut it up here to size, okay? And then I'm gonna punch holes in it. So I'll show you that. Let me go to my cutter. So I've cut it like six by eight and then save these little pieces. You can use them for other things later. So I want to decide, do I want my tab down here or do I want my tab up here? And I think I want my tab down here. So now I'm going to take this. My little clear thing. And I'm going to take my little, run this up. And this is hard to punch through, it's kind of thick. So now I have this little plastic tab page, which is kind of this green, it's kind of a green color. So I like that. Okay, so that fits in there good. I didn't get it off, I was like, oh, get it off. 
So now I have some other, I have some other pages that I like. Um, now I really like this paper. I'm gonna do something else too. I'm gonna clip these little, I'm gonna clip these little sleeves so I don't forget that that's a possibility of something I might wanna use in here. Okay. And yeah, I got too much, I got too much on my desk. Hold on. Throw those away. So, I think what I want to do, I want to put this in here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fold it over. So I got to think about. If I can see. So I have to think about: Do I want it that long, or do I want a little bit more of a fold over? And I think I really want a little bit more. I don't think it it has to be the same size as the other pages. So I'm gonna fold this over. Now this is a little bit different kind of paper. Um, you see how it's sort of cracked? It's really thick and slick. It's pretty little studio paper that I bought on sale last year. So, um, but it's cool. And I could always put a little piece of tape or something just to cover up where that, where that does that or ink it. I could just ink it a little bit, you know. I've got my inker right here. And just kind of cover that up, okay? Um, and then I probably, I'm gonna cut it down. I'll cut this piece off. So where's my template? So I'm gonna take my template. I'm not gonna go to my cutter right now, but just know that I'm gonna go back and cut that piece off. So I'm gonna put my template to the top of that so I know I need to cut that off there. I just don't have enough space to put my big cutter over here where I'm at. Um, so I don't want, I don't want to keep running back and forth, but so there's that page. Now you can too. I like these two with kind of pages sticking out and sticking out to the side and on the bottom. If you like that, you can just cut all different kinds of pages, page sizes. So just, just showing, showing you some different ways to do this. Um, so let's see. So I have this December um, calendar page. So do I want to do the same thing with it? And if I've got enough room, and I think I do, just give it just enough room to punch your hole over here. So that when you put it in there, you can flip this out. And then on this side, you could cover this up with something else. You could put pockets or collage or, you know, whatever. Just so many different options. And I think this is, this is a little bit too tall as well. So I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna come down to the bottom because this is the part I wanna cut off. Um, well, you know what? No, I don't know. I need to do, I need to do it more in the middle because I don't wanna cut the December off. Yeah. So all those things you just need to think about when you're when you're doing this. Um, so you can sit and kind of do all this and then take all your stuff. You don't have to put it on the rings, you know, as you're working. I'm just trying to show you. And then, so let me show you something else. Um, I hope you get the idea of how, how I do the pages in there now. And then you can do, you know, you can do different sizes too. I wish I had something right here that I wanted to show you how to do. Okay, so like this is a, this is a printable. And I can't remember if this is a, I can't remember whose printable this is. I can't remember if it's Graphics Fairy or if it's Rachel at Rocks Your Creation. So let's say, I want to make a pocket right here, okay? So you can fold a piece of paper up like I did there, and then let's say, let's cut off this side, and I'll just do it with my scissors just for now. I'll straighten it up later. Okay. Um, so I want this to be a pocket here. And I'm gonna take my 
template. Okay, so I want it kind of in the middle. And if I wanted it closer to the bottom, I could come up here, and I could come up here closer to the top. But don't go too far. You know, one hole's not gonna get it. Okay, so now I could have a pocket here. Okay, now um, you can glue this to make a pocket or you can stitch it to make a pocket. We could come in here and, you know, punch a little um, half circle, you know, to give you a little place there, make it easier to go in and out of the pocket. You can, depending on what you have, like if you had a two-sided paper or something, you can fold this over. Just tons of ideas, tons of ideas. And so what I do with these, let me go back to the whole reinforcement. So on the book pages, because they're thinner, let me just pull these out. So these are thinner, these are thinner book pages, like just to give it some sturdiness. Um, and if you want the white, like if it's, if it's closer to white, then you could just use the white. But if you want the vintage, I just use my um, vintage photo. And I simply just do this with my, see me? I simply just color them like this to make them look aged. Then they blend in better with a vintage paper, okay? And you can really color these, like you can just do a whole, um, whole sheet of them so you have them. You can color them with anything. Another one of those um, possibilities are endless. Okay, but that's what I do when I have a vintage, have a really colored, you know, page that that's, looks a lot older. Okay, so that's that. And then let me see where I'm at on time. Yeah, I think I've, I think I've uh, rambled on enough in this one. I hope that you guys find this helpful. It's gonna be a little bit of a long video. Um, but I wanted to give you just different ideas on how to do this. So let me know what you think, and uh, I'll be back again soon with the collage video. Love you guys. Bye.